Welcome back to yet another episode of the CJ Tour Podcast. Thank you as always so much for listening. I'm your host, Calvin Glenn Alexander. But this is an episode of the Big 3 in OKC as we're rejoined. Two podcasts, one week after missing a couple. So trying to get back at it in the groove here. But we'll have update all of you guys on reasons why here in a moment. For that, there's several variety of reasons. In fact, there's top five reasons we have of why I haven't done podcasts in a couple weeks. So... That being said, I'm joined by, oh, as always, by Joel DiNicolo and Walter Agnich. It's part of the other Big 3 and OKC guys, which I got to say, I think I got to change the name of the podcast a little bit. I'm not in Oklahoma City anymore. Where are you at now, Walt, uh, Calvin? I actually moved out to L.A., which is my <laughs> top one reason of why the podcast hasn't been done in the past uh, couple of weeks. I don't know. Is that a fair, is that a fair first of the top five? Let Walter get the next one here. Yeah, but we just got to, everybody got to give you a good hand clap. Major upgrade yep. Thank city-wise. You. Thank you. Best city in the entire world. Salute to you, man, on getting a career. Uh, when I started, you've already started that for quite some time now. But uh, taking uh, all your knowledge and resources out to the West Coast, man, I'm digging it. Thanks so much. Yeah, I'm sorry that I had to uh, offer up uh, an obligatory sacrifice that moved Kate Cunningham to Detroit for me. But <laughs> you know what? Hey, it's what it is. <laughs> um. Yeah, Kate, Kate, you can always vacation out in Manhattan Beach. That's where, like, everyone has a house out here anyways. So, that's an NBA player. So, anyways. Go ahead, Walt. What's, what's, yeah, your, Cal- what's one of your reasons? Uh, I was just going to add, I'm just, yeah. I'm just happy for you that uh, you're finally joining a winning team. You know? Oh, thank Detroit. you so much. Cheers. Y- yeah, Cheers. Yeah. I'm sure the Pistons will ruin the number. Do you think they'll draft Darko Milicic again? Do you think they'll use that pick to draft him? In- no, I, maybe uh, not. Okay, so never mind. I, so, yeah. no, no, right, we'll so I on. walked into work. And the first question I got asked was, hey, so the Pistons going to trade that pick? I'm like, what? Oh, For who? God. What? And then, hey. and then, a, and then a, I'm not going to name names, but a 76ers fan said, oh, yeah, dude, they're they're thinking about trading the pick. Like, have you seen, haven't seen the rumors? And I was like, all right, hey, you know what? I'm sorry Ben Simmons sucks. Oh. You know, I'm sorry you got <laughs> to throw shade immediately at the Detroit Pistons after Ben Simmons sucks. My bad. I bet. So, anyways. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, I was more down the route that uh, Troy Weaver, uh, when he was down in Oklahoma City, Sam Presti got some blackmail material on him, like he does on every person in the league, like he did on Brad Stevens recently, uh, and was going to blackmail uh, Weaver into trading him the pick. That's kind of my, my idea. Well, so, Walter, I know we got off on tangents, and I'm just embracing it here at this point. Yeah. Yep. Would you nope. trade Lou Dort straight up for the first overall pick this year? Oh, hell no. Oh, oh no. My God. Are you kidding? See? Are you kidding me? The best. No. I knew the best, he was going to say no. Not only the contract doesn't make sense because Lou Dort's on the best contract in the NBA. He's also the best defender in the NBA. So I no, no, it's not worth the first pick. Not even close. All right, Walter, I'm muting you. Joel, go ahead. What's your top one reason why? Why? What, How about that? What's another one top reasons why? Well, I just got to say, though, with Walter, man, we got this long break, and here we go. We, we're how many seconds, minutes into this podcast? And Wait, we're, we're, still we're three minutes in, is... and I'm immediately trying to get away from my horrible question of, would you trade Lou Dort for Kate Cunningham straight up? And Walt goes, hell no, I'm keeping Lou Dort. <laughs> yeah, no. I think if you took a poll, too, 99% say they don't do the trade. So, you know, This is there why we people go. ask, are you serious? All right, go ahead. Joel. No, no, dead, dead, dead serious there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Although I th- I think I need to say the reason why I think Joel's going to say, right? You have welcomed a new child into this world. That's almost how Walter would say it too. So congrats, Joel. Give Appreciate you a it. Bit of the, uh, the applause here in the background. So Woo-hoo! that's got to be the other reason of why we haven't done a podcast here in a couple weeks because Joel had a kid. Yes, yes. Uh, it was supposed to be on May 27th, and due to uns- uh, um, some unforeseen circumstances, uh, his birthday is June 1st, delivered uh, successfully after about 10 hours of labor, give or take. Um, but yeah, everything's going well. Uh, just trying to get into the rhythm of uh, the new sleeping, uh, waking up a couple times throughout the night. But uh, he's healthy, he's gaining, you know, he's gaining, he's getting chunky, and uh and uh, big brother uh, uh, Julian is uh, really doing a great job stepping up and uh, caring for him. So uh, all is well over here. Thank God. Uh, a little bit about three and a half weeks in. Awesome. All right. Walter, bring it to you. Yeah, no, uh, mine's a little bit of bad news. I had a recent health scare. Um, as we know, Joel was dealing with the hearing issue 
uh, thank God that seems to be resolved. But uh, some of the reason of the delay of the podcast was I lost my voice for a week. <laughs> it was very scary. And Walter, uh, thank, what, thank God, I, thank God, I got my voice back. Uh, Calvin, back to you. Wait, hold on, well, what, what Walter. Was, Walter, I, what were, everyone gave an explanation as to why and went more yeah. detail. Can you get more Walter, detail um, here? Of... Walter, what were you doing your, with your throat? To, uh, <clears> throat> the, the the, I I can't pinpoint it. Um, I will say, and you can tell it's still not a hundred percent back, which is kind of scary. Uh, there was a uh, trip to Dallas uh, okay. that involved a uh, game, uh, not a game, but game six of the Maverick series. I might have been at a, a certain sports bar. And I might have been screaming Boban because I made a bet with about three other people that Boban would have more than 10 points, uh, which he had 12 points. So that was a good bet by me. Um, so that might have soared the voice. Um, and then the next night we went to a piano bar. And, uh, you know, when they ask you to get on stage and sing, you just got to belt it without a mic. And I think that's what uh, ruptured the vocal cords. See, I really thought you were going to go into a tangent here about how you were trying to sneak into Jerry Jones's house and steal one of the Super Bowl rings. So you could wear it on your own finger and feel like you were a champion as well. But you know, oh no, those are those are trash Super Bowl rings, anyways. Who would want them? Well, there, there's five of them. I mean, how many did the Packers have again? Uh, the Packers have quite a bit. If you want to include the uh, super, not Super Bowls, but the NFL championships too. How about no, that? Just, no, we're we're talking Super Bowl rings, my guy. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm counting. I'm counting NFL championships. I'm not know? talking about the stuff that was named after because you know coaches. There, that doesn't because you know there because there was things that happened before the Super Bowl started, and those things have relevance. So they were called championships. If you say so. I mean, I'm not counting <laughs> the Sonics championship for the Thunder, am I? Nope. So, all right, uh, that's on. that's different. What well, that's nope. a completely different subject, Calvin. That is that is the same subject. That is that is that is apples to oranges. Muted. So they have fun <laughs> with the mute mute button. It's out here. It's ready. I'm not not taking any holds barred here. Well, all you right, know anyways, it's a good um, thing. My my doctor said I'm on a minutes restriction anyways from speaking because I don't want to re re rupture the vocal cords. So you, you are still so going. Gonna, yep. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> let Joel speak for a minute. I'm on a minutes restriction. Joel, do you? <laughs> All right. Well, if we're doing top five, obviously I told you I'd give you my one. Mine, mine uh, is is um, something that uh, I feel is very special to all of us. Uh, Walter actually even came over to the house last weekend and celebrated not only uh, Julian's birthday but also coming to see Bash. Walter, I can't thank you enough, man. You're a great friend on uh, always coming out to any type of event over here at the house and showing love to to now uh, all all the kids now, man. So I deeply appreciate that, Walter, man. I just want to throw a comp. I, I really wanted to squeeze that compliment out in the show because just for some reason, for whatever reason it happens, you and I just go north and south real quick. But while we're on a good terms right now, I just want to shout you out, okay? All right. Yeah, over- I appreciate Wow, I appreciate that. Thanks, Goat. <laughs> that means a lot. Just don't screenshot it. Yeah, no. I, I was trying to screenshot the nice compliment you gave me earlier on Instagram. And you deleted it before I could uh, screenshot it. So no, I, I get it. I had a fun time though. <laughs> Too good. All right. Well, so we've got some podcast questions, of course, regarding the NBA. Now we've all kind of caught up a little bit. I'd say my other reason, of course, is just starting the new job, getting everything set up here for the podcast. That'd be the other top five thing. I don't know. Well, do you have one more to round us out here? Oh yeah, I do. Um, yes, this would be my number one. Uh, Sorry, Goat. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get us north and south right now. Uh, how about the Lakers absolutely getting destroyed by the Suns? So that's I a mean, reason Paul, why you couldn't Chris, record the podcast? Chris, Chris yeah. Paul, that's a yeah. reason why yeah. you, Chris, as Chris, Walter, could yes. not record I, gotta, not, I just got to throw it in. Yeah. Nope, I'm losing my laptop here. No, yeah, no. That's a, that was another reason of ce- just celebrating. Wow. Chris Paul, who is two games away from the, from the NBA Finals, just absolutely embarrassed LeBron. Yeah, how and Westbrook, campaign and how, campaign. How Westbrook doing it, I, in the I, well, you know, if you want to bring your subject up with Westbrook, you're more than welcome to. I'm on my section. And how about Cameron Payne? Twenty nine points in a game two the other night. Uh, who knew that he would be able to bounce back? And he was in China, for heaven's sake, uh, able to come back. Now it's like, man, maybe you don't resign Chris Paul because Cameron Payne's going to get you 30 a night. I'm going to say that to people later on. I'm on my subject whenever they ask me to stop talking. I'm on my subject. That's yeah, I'm on my subject. I'm on my on my section, I should have said. Um, I remember meeting Cameron Payne at a BJ's uh, brewery and uh, or steakhouse, whatever it's called. I don't even think it's opened anymore. Uh, what a terrific guy. Terrific guy. He decided, he decided he wanted IHOP and he left. He didn't even eat anything. 
Probably got bored waiting in line. I don't remember um, where you were at, Calvin, because you were invited. I think you were at Stillwater. Yeah, I probably was going to school for forever. There. Anyways, here. Um, that does bring up the, your Cameron Payne question. Does bring up another question that I have for you guys to the podcast. So currently, of course, the Clippers and Suns are playing. Um, it's cool. just after halftime. Let's say. Let, let's say, for example, whenever you're listening to this, either the Clippers won or lost. So either it's. 2-1 or 3-0. Either way, do you think the Clippers can come back in this series? Can I go first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, for sure. Obviously, this is not uncharted territory for the Clippers. Of course, they got down uh, 0-2 versus the Mavericks, as well as the Jazz. And we both know how those series went down. Um, I, I know one, if not both of you guys, might have the rebuttal of, hey, Chris Paul is coming back. However, um, Chris Paul also hasn't played a basketball game in, in a, what almost nearly what a week and a half, two weeks. So um, he still has to get in his own flow, let alone the team getting back in their flow. Especially Walter talking about campaign. Now campaign has to go back to the back seat, back seat role. So some slight adjustments that they got to do. Why they're in Los Angeles? Uh, since I was right now we're recording. It's a uh, third quarter out in the Staples Center, uh, close game. Uh, but yes, uh, I still have faith in the Clippers. Uh, I like what I saw out of Paul George in the first two games, even though he did choke at the free throw line. Uh, it, he's really stepped up since Kawhi's been out. So um, yeah, I, I, I think with Reggie Jackson and, and Terrence Mann and, and, and some of these role players are really, really stepping up their game, which you got to do in the playoffs, um, especially when one of your uh, your primary guns go down. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, not not in fear. I, with the Lakers out, uh, Clippers were my next pick to, to go ahead and take care of business and move on to the finals. Um, so no, no reason to change that right now. Uh, so yes, definitely very, very, very confident that the uh, Clippers can come back and win the series. Well, sir, I think I know where you stand either way here, but I do want to ask, if the Clippers win tonight, Walt, can they come back? Because I think you're going to say no matter what, the same answer either way, but I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, uh, Clippers can win tonight. The series is over. Uh, first, before we get started, I'm just glad that uh, Joel did not argue my point about the Lakers getting stomped, so obviously he was in agreement there. We'll move on back to the Clippers. Uh, yeah, no, it's just, it's a whole different animal. If they had have Kawhi, I'd understand. I'd say this series isn't, you know, is, is still competitive. Uh, but just the way that the Suns are playing, uh, they're going to get it. Chris Paul back. And I know I was joking about campaign having 30 and, you know, not keeping Paul, uh, this series is over. They're just, they're, the Clippers just can't stop them, Joel. There's just no way. Um, I understand that there's going to be a game where the Clippers probably catch fire like they did in game six against uh, Utah where Utah. Terrence Mann uh, Ooh. and Reggie Ooh. Jackson. I think they went, what, 70% from three in the third quarter. I understand that they're probably going to have one of those games in game three or game four. Uh, they're not going to do it in both. Uh, they're going to send it back to game five, and the Suns are going to win it in five. Guaranteed. Wow. Oh. That's a guarantee for you. Okay. Um, and well, if it, I, and if it doesn't my... happen, it's not my fault. I put on my own Instagram, Suns and Forge, because I think it's a really funny thing to say at this point with a guy getting beaten up the Denver Nuggets fans. But I will say well, how here, about how about the right with the Clippers fans? I mean, geez, these Suns fans are just they're just beating the crap out of everybody. How about that, Joel? They're a resilient bunch. I mean, they <laughs> they they are out here going, we hey, we have been fighting against the Lakers fans for decades. We are down to throw hands with whoever now that we beat the Lakers. Basically, they got all the confidence in the world, which honestly, like, I mean, maybe they should just because Lakers are pretty darn. I mean, you got AD and LeBron that they beat. Granted, it was banged up AD and LeBron. We can get into that in the offseason, maybe even a little bit more. But I got to say, I mean, if the Suns go down, if the Suns go up, excuse me, 3 0, then yeah, it's, it's, it's got to be the Suns, got to win the whole thing, whatever. But the Clippers are currently up five with seven minutes left seven ish minutes left in the third um excuse me up seven with seven ish minutes left in the third as we're speaking so if the clippers close this out i mean it's be 2-1 clippers got another home game on saturday i believe i got that right where yep. then they can make it 2-2 two -two. it's interesting yep. to me as well that the clippers don't haven't really needed home court advantage throughout the whole entire playoffs to win their series they lost home court advantage against the mavs still won the series Lost home court advantage against the Jazz, Jazz, still won the series. Lost Kawhi Leonard during the Jazz series, still won the series. So that type of stuff is crazy to me. And I do want to say here as well, 
Reggie effing Jackson. Man, what the hell happened? Man. Because yeah, I, I got to say, I got to say, I got to say, I have not liked Reggie Jackson for a minute since he left the Thunder. Of course, if he's wearing the Thunder blue, yeah, I'm going to be rooting for him all the time. But I'm not rooting for him pretty much at all since then. I mean, you know, I mean, there was there was a little bit, of course, when I'm with the Pistons, I'm rooting for him just because I want to see the Pistons win games, of course. But I wasn't a fan of how he dealt with that whole situation, saying he's going to start over Westbrook. He's never been better than Westbrook. I think Joel even agree on that one. But right now, he's sh- he's showing up and out like he is making up for for whatever they needed, and it truly does look like if you had to go into this season beforehand and you went, I got to get either Dennis Schroeder or Reggie Jackson. Never in my life would I have gone, oh, yeah, I'll take Reggie Jackson until pretty much this playoffs, this last playoff series against the Jazz. Because he's just been, I hate to say it, but he's been fun to watch. He's just making yes. stuff. He's not missing. It's fun to watch it when the guys are making stuff. That's why, honestly, like, I'm, I'm rocking the Chris Paul. Okay, of course, it's Oklahoma City Thunder because I'm not buying a Suns jersey just yet. But, you know, I'm rocking the Chris Paul 3 from last year, to the Thunder jersey. But it's a ton of fun to watch the Suns and Devin Booker and Chris Paul. At the same point, gosh, the Clippers are fun to watch, except for when Pat Beverly's on the court. It's the only that's the only issue I got. The only <laughs> issue I got. That ball, there is no way that there is no way Paul George should have ever been shooting two free throws. We gotta say that. That ball was out on Pat Bev as the the rule or whatever may be different. That ball was out on Pat Bev, right? Yeah, it's just it's really tough because it they're not re- if that happens in the first quarter, they're not reviewing it. They're giving the Suns mm-hmm. the ball, so it's really hard to say and to review it in the fourth. And it would be a different call in the first than it would be on the fourth. So I don't really know how you'd rectify that that problem. But yeah, no, thank goodness Paul George smoked those two free throws and choked. Man, oh, man. And, yeah, and but on no, that and note, then, though, and then on they that got note, that they got that free timeout too for the other review. The they Suns got the, draw, the free timeout. Yeah. The so, so not only did, not only are we going to say ball don't lie, but actually it worked out for the Suns' favor after all of this mm-hmm. from the replays. Yeah, but, but I, I have a problem with that. Oh, the Suns got a free timeout because you know who is asking for the review? It was Ty Lue and the Clippers. So if you don't want them to get the timeout, don't say review it. You know, they I'm sorry. Reviewed. They would, have I, would they? I don't know if they would have. If if Ty Lue and Pat Bev and all of them did say, go review it. So I kind of feel like the Clippers brought that on themselves. For whatever it is, this series is nowhere near done in my mind. Like, even if the Clippers lose tonight, which right now they're up eight. I know I'm giving, like, the live scoring updates. Whenever you listen to this podcast, you're probably like, well, dude, what the hell? I already know who won, clearly. <laughs> Um, but, Whoa, Calvin, and I've had a lot of people tell us they would love to listen to you, me, and Joel sit down on a couch, crack open three cold ones, and then just call a game. Just any I, game. No, no, I've heard people say that for sure, too. I have not heard anyone go, yeah, dude, thanks so much for the live scoring updates as the game's in progress. Well, you're, uh, we're, we're going to finish recording here before the game's going to end, I think. So I'm not trying to go for a two-hour podcast, unless you guys are. I mean, it's much later to you guys than me, so that's all I'm being said. With all that being said, though, even if the Clippers lose this game, the Clippers have played the Suns extremely close in the past, too, without Kawhi. Like, if Kawhi comes back for game four and the Clippers lose tonight, it's not over. It's It should be, but it, it still won't be over in my mind. Because if Kawhi, I, I still got to be under the belief that if Kawhi feels like he can come back, it's because he can come back and actually make a difference, not because he can come back and just be out there. You know? Isn't this... Isn't this Kawhi injury so Kawhi? <laughs> just quiet. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's has all the details. We're just assuming game by game. I think it's hilarious, uh, but I love it um, of him keeping it under wraps. Uh, you would imagine that this is probably going to be a uh, series ending, which I, we all hope not, obviously, to keep this series going, the playoffs going. We've had enough injuries, of course, from from a lot of superstars, a lot of prime role role players and um yeah we hate to see another one go down so i think we're all hoping that it comes i've seen a little video that he's he's there in staples center and in um in one of the boxes so uh he's uh, i feel like if he wasn't that hurt he'd at least be sitting on the sidelines to be honest yeah and i learned the day he has to resign kids. with the clippers mm-hmm. right oh this no no no, no. Be, he has to resign the clippers no, no, no. He, he, that's what this injury is about. He's working on the deal to Miami right now to go play with Jimmy Butler, who he originally wanted to play with before calling Paul George. He's if I'm Miami, I don't right want. Now. If I'm Miami, I don't want this. 
I don't want this. Well, see, that's Sam this Presti last playing thing games. Sam Presti's going to convince Pat Riley to sign Kawhi. That's just how it is. Sam Presti's playing chess again. <laughs> you, you don't, don't the Thunder have one of the Heat picks? Don't we not want the Heat to be good anyways? It, no, no, no. The, after this year, we don't have any more Heat picks. This is the only okay. year we have a Heat pick, I believe. Um, but here's the thing. Most of us did not want the sixth pick for the Thunder. Sam Presti wanted the sixth pick for the sun, Thunder. That's how brilliant this man is. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> I see you're twisting it, Walter, because a couple of nights ago you were in just straight tears, you man. We didn't even talk to anybody. You, you were yeah. mad. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that was pretty angry. Yeah, no. I'm just saying, how many times are you going to give the Cavs a top three pick to screw it up? <laughs> I mean, my goodness. There it should is. Be, there there it should is. Be ter- there I'm just saying, there should be term limits. Like, Let okay, yes, yes, you got into the top three for the 10th time, but you know what? You've been in it too many times. You have obviously don't know what you're doing. We're going to give this to a team that it does. I think that's reasonable. I think the Thunder should have straight up had a bunch of the Oklahoma State Blue guys join the team on the final day of the season and really tank that last game against the Clippers. Yeah, that, that, that gives game, me even that more game reason. Could have changed so much more than just well, just our draft odds. That's why I hate the Clippers even more right now, Calvin. Even more because they let Poku hit back to back threes to give him the win. They knew what they were doing. I, Clearly, they, they knew what they were doing. They made it the farther than that, a bunch of other teams. The fact that not one of our players, you know, Mike Muscala should have ran out in street clothes and tackled Pokacheski from taking that second three. Much like in semi-pro. Should have done it. It's ridiculous. Maybe. All right. So next question I got here is, and this is basically for, this is basically a Joel question. Will you ever have confidence in Giannis? After we've seen him lose to the <laughs> Hawks last night, 0-1 in the series, but they did beat the Nets. So that's that's what I'm, I'm, that's what I'm trying to, you know, more to the question than that. You know, just the, will uh, you ever have confidence in Giannis? Uh, hell no. Um, uh, that you bring <laughs> Said that before the season. <laughs> <laughs> Said it before the season. Uh, they have gone a little bit further into the playoffs, and I imagine you had mentioned, obviously, the defeat uh, over the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, I think we all know how and why that all went down. There's a lot of asterisks on a lot of these teams and a lot of the results this season. Oh, yeah, we yeah, all yeah. know it should have been Lakers versus Nets, but injuries. Oh, my gosh. Katie's feet are too big. Katie's feet Two are too big. Two superstars in L.A. A couple oh, superstars. Oh, my gosh. He's got to wear Fred. smaller shoes to reduce his shoes. Wow. So all right. This, this Bring it on, be, Joel. Come on. This would be the playoff run for just some w- random team. Obviously, right, we have right. a, a f- we got four random teams playing right now, including. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. So this is the year. Is. Take advantage of it. But uh, to answer your question, uh, no, 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 no. Giannis has been obviously in the league now for eight seasons. He missed the playoffs two out of his first three seasons, and even uh, up until these last couple of years, had they had you know great seasons per se. I mean, there's a couple of seasons that he made the playoffs with a 42 and 40 record. He made a 41 to 41 record. So. It's not like he's been killing the league. It hasn't even been dominating since LeBron left the East. Um, and then, yeah, you, you, you take one on the chin to Atlanta last night. Again, yeah, Atlanta, you know, being uh, one of the hottest teams right there with Phoenix. Um, you know, shocking, shock. Well, I don't want to say shocking the world, but uh, making some major noise. I think a little bit ahead of the uh, ahead of expectations, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Giannis got lucky uh, with a, a, a matchup missing two two of the three uh, studs in Brooklyn. So, uh, man, I think this is going to be uh, man. It's going to be huge on his resume in a negative way when you see Atlanta. <laughs> Knock them out in the Eastern Conference Finals, finally getting there, and uh, yeah, uh, getting leapfrogged uh, for a finals position. So uh, no, uh, no confidence whatsoever in Giannis' ability to turn a team around. No confidence in the way this team is set up, um, and uh, yeah, they better they better be careful because they might get swept. Uh, that Trey Young, oh my goodness, I know Calvin, you're going to go on a, a a little bit of a rebuttal on this one, but Trey Young, hear me out, superstar status, and here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. He has the potential to be better than Steph Curry. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes, I'm going to that level. What Trey Young has done this early in his career, 
is, is unbelievable. And then just watching how, I mean, he, coming off that pick and roll, I mean, he's in the category already right now uh, of a Steph Curry and, and, and a CP3 and a Nash where you're almost in the category of being unstoppable off that pick and roll just because of his, his threat of being able to shoot the, the deep ball and, you know, penetrate, get into the paint. Um. Yeah. Uh. Ooh, this matchup is not good. This. Uh. You can't. Pr- you can't play Brook Lopez. Uh. Portis got scorched worse. Even even worse than Lopez did last night. They. They can't play neither one of those guys if they even want to keep this. If they want to win a game in the series. So Walter's had some crazy takes. Walter and I have both had some crazy <laughs> takes. Some crazy ideas. Some thoughts. We've said. I think I said that the Knicks wouldn't make the playoffs this year. Clearly that was wrong. Um. I. Forget Walter. I think you said that Timberwolves are going to make the playoffs this year. Clearly, that didn't happen either. But the craziest take I've ever heard in my entire life, especially during this podcast series, is that Trey Young can be better than Steph Curry. A back to back unanimous MVP, oh, a yeah. multiple oh, finals I told you, championship Joel, he wasn't like winner, that. <laughs> a multiple finals championship winner, a man who has made the playoffs in almost every single season that he's been healthy. Okay, go ahead. Go what's what I mean, I mean I mean really, go ahead. Trey Young is the youngest, the young or I said tied for the youngest to put up over forty five points in a playoff game. The other two individuals, LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. So I'm just yeah, like you know, yeah. early Le- LeBron on the career, and Kobe, he is, do they play point guard? Ahead, LeBron and Kobe, do they play the point guard? What's that gotta do with how good he can be? Cause, cause Trey Young's just throwing up the ball half the time. He just, he doesn't even pass it to anyone. <laughs> oh my God! Here we go. Oh man, Trey Young, you realize he led NCAA in assists, right? So you can't say he didn't. He sure, doesn't pass and the I know ball. I'm gonna eat my words here because I'm a big Westbrook supporter too, right? Clearly, but I gotta say, better than Steph. I mean, come on. The, I said the potential. He said potential. Said potential. But that's what I'm saying. See, that, that, see, but that's worked. what I'm getting at. The the potentially better than better. Because I think, okay, so if you're going through Steph Curry, all-time rankings, every NBA player ever, is Steph Curry in your top 20? Yes. Okay, so you're saying Trey Young has potential to be one of the top 20 NBA players of all time. That's what, that's what you're saying, though. And that, I... He I, I'm averaged not nearly. I'm not Cal- there, Calvin. He averaged nearly thirty points in his second year in the NBA. Twenty nine points, thirty points, twenty nine point six. We over here counting fractions in his second year in the NBA as a twenty one year old, first time All Star last year. Yes, he has. He has what it takes to to be on that Hall of Fame level and surpass you know who we all are loving the door right now uh, as we see him. Well, I'll say he's kind of sliding down his prime right now. Uh, yes, Trey Young has the ability to make it happen. Man, I better than Cade Cunningham. Trey Young has a better potential to be, to be better than Cade Cunningham. Really? Is that we're good now? <laughs> Walt, you're you're uh, an OU supporter. You've worn an OU shirt before on this podcast. What say you here, Walter? You're muted, or somehow the mic's unplugged. I'm yeah, sorry. sorry about that. You're you good. know, You're I'm good. on the minute on the minutes restriction again. Thank you for oh, giving no. me that no, brief moment to catch my breath. Uh, uh, before I get started, I, we, I need to touch base on what Joel said about how it was. The season has an asterisk by it. Please, <laughs> Joel. Please, just because the Lakers don't make it doesn't mean there's an asterisk on the season. The only team that has a right to beef is the Nets. And you know what? If I'm Kyrie Irving, I'm playing with a sprained ankle. I'm sorry. That's what. That's just what I'm doing. And, you know, James Harden was out there playing, so you got to – I don't care, you know, if he was hurt, he was hurt. But, you know, that's probably the only team that has the the right to say, hey, we should win the NBA championship. Because if you think about it, the Nuggets, even if Jamal Murray was healthy, they weren't going to win it. Uh, Who else was dealing with injuries? Uh, The Jazz. The Jazz. Even if the Jazz – had a uh, healthy Mike Conley. They were still losing to the Clippers. Mike Conley uh, played the Lakers, game seven. Mike Conley played he game did, seven. Yeah, and that's true. He did come back. He did come back. The Lakers were missing, missing Anthony Davis. But let's be honest. They would have lost to the Suns anyways with Anthony Davis. Okay. DeAndre Ayton uh, had his number. Dude, you, so, uh, you're yeah, saying I'm sorry. Way too quickly. Dude, way I, too the, the Lakers would not. The Lakers. I, I know. I was talking about the beginning of the season. It's going to be an easy run for the Lakers. But you know what? The team fell apart in the middle of the season. I'm sorry. They just weren't playing very well. Uh, they were not going to advance past the Suns. So to say that there's an asterisk on the season. You know what I call it? I call it the beginning of parody. And I've really enjoyed it, Joel. 
That's what I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed finally seeing a LeBron James list, a Kevin Durant list, a, you know, playoff game. So you, you know what? I enjoy yeah. it. The only reason you're getting parody is, as you just said it yourself, because of injuries. You just said because <laughs> one injury. I'll give you one. The Nets. Yes, the Ooh. Nets should be there. Everyone else. The Lakers no. were up no. two one okay, on the Suns. We probably wouldn't be watching this Clippers oh, Suns game right now. If no, it was they were for, still eating their Anthony lunch. Davis Chris Paul was making a dance. Again. It was going to be gone. No. Oh my god. He was still would have beaten the Lakers. What are we going to start taking championships away? Do you want to take away the 2015 Golden State Championship? I know I would like to, even though they played every team with an injury, including the Cavs in the finals. So if we want to do that, let's just start taking championships away. I'm going to take one away from LeBron uh, for beating the Thunder. That was on a shortened season because of the lockout. Doesn't count. Where else? You want to take more championships away, Joel? This guy over here. Where man, are we going? This, that that number six pick really upsetting you, isn't it? That no, number six it, really no, gets to you. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's I still that's have all I had to say. Question here for you is no that's, use. Okay, supporter. that's all I had to say. Trey Young has the potential to be better than now, Steph Curry. Now, now, the, now the goat and I can go back into agreement. Yes, I do think that. Um, did you not see he Drew Holiday, who's probably one of the best guard defenders? He not broke his ankle. Sat at the three-point line, gave a shimmy, stared him down, and then drained a three in front of him. Went up for a layup, threw it off the back. Oh, he's going to go. He's going to. Uh, he did the walk I mean, off. Here's, uh... here's the thing. Here's the thing, Joel. With the 76ers, what he did was crazy. They fouled Ben Simmons, getting Ben Simmons out of the game. And they thought, oh, the, the help, the benefit of the Hawks was the fact that Ben Simmons was missing free throws. That wasn't it. It was the fact that Ben Simmons was doing a good job guarding Trey Young. You notice when Ben Simmons got checked out of the game, Trey Young started going off. So it's just, you know, and even in game, what was it, game five of the 76ers series, the, he had hit one three the entire game. Two minutes left, they're up three from the logo. He has no conscious, pulls it and drains it. To give, he's just a big time player in big time moments. Calvin scored thirty nine points in that game five win in Philly. By the way, yeah, and not only that can get to the that that floater is lethal. He just knows how to. He finds a way to get fouled. He finds a way to get open shots. It's it's just it's really good. He's a really good player. Yeah, Unguard- I think he's got the potential. unguardable, unguardable, except for by Ben Simmons. He I, averaged, I, I, he averaged 30 points in that series, but yeah. But, I mean, to Walter's point, so, right, Ben Simmons gets checked out, then he goes off. I mean, that that's all I'm saying. I'm what no, saying. I didn't say Ben Simmons shut him down. I said Ben Simmons did a better job holding him. Right. Uh, and then when that, Ben Simmons got checked out. But Ben Simmons is a, an elite defender, too, so. Yeah, he's, that, he's that's all I'm saying. That's ben, all I'm saying. Ben, Sim, ben Simmons, you know, Ben Simmons is only 24 years old. He still has a lot of time to develop his jump shot. Bro. Right. Uh-oh, is that he's, Bro, is that he's not segue? done. Is that the segue? Bro. I remember watching Ben Simmons and Buddy Heald duel LSU versus OU. That was back in the Bedlam Brother days, Calvin. Uh, there's Ben Simmons can learn to shoot. He'll be fine. Maybe by the time he's 34. I don't see it at 27. It's, that's that's 10 years away, Calvin. Jeez. I That's right. Because he hasn't learned in the first 24 years. I'll give him 10 more to try to figure it out. We could teach Scotty to shoot faster than that. I would hope so, but Ben Simmons has been playing basketball at a elite level for ten years, right? He's twenty four, so I mean, since he's been fourteen, since he's been in high school, he's been playing basketball at an elite level, right? Well, he's been playing in Australia. I don't know if you no, call no, no, that elite. But, uh, well, yeah, elite level. He's been playing played. professional-ish basketball, where he's been going, where he's he's had hype of being drafted number one overall by a team for ten yep. years. And he yeah, hasn't had any jump shot. I'll give him another with, ten to get a jump shot. I'm sure he's working with some great talent when he was on Australia. I don't know what the what he was doing at LSU. I don't I'm think that was name great. This I don't think that was good. Walter hates Australia as a country. I'm not going to. I'm not going to name Australia. I'm just saying he's he's only been in the Philadelphia 76ers organization for what five six years. Five five years, Missed and not to year. mention not to mention that's a franchise that. I mean, trust the process, but now that Doc's in there, I'd say is somewhat more stable. Uh, yeah, there's a difference between learning at shoot, learning how to shoot at LSU versus an NBA team. So I would expect it to get better. Well, I'm going to ask you this real quick, okay? I want you through oh. a series of questions, all right? You ready? Yeah. yeah. Has my basketball game got better over the past year? Yeah. Have I worked a full-time job in the past year? Uh, Yeah. Have I also tried to do several other things with my life besides just play basketball as my full-time job in the past year? I think you were learning French at one point, yes. 
So why in the hell can this man not learn how to shoot a basketball in one year when somebody who has plenty of other responsibilities and duties can learn how to get better at basketball while because doing those other responsibilities and duties? Because he's been in the NBA for five years. And oh, my bad. Zero he's had five years. Five years. One. My bad. With he M- had too NBA much time. coaching. He had NBA too coaching, much time. NBA training. This dude has made 1,800 shots, and only five of them have been three-pointers. He's my dad, uh, uh, this this will be the screenshot threes. for like whatever we do for the YouTube video. My bad, Walt. My bad. You know he yeah, has are the you height. Ben Simmons defender? Like, what, no, what is he this has, coming? Uh, Where no, is this coming just, from? Just, I'm just saying he has the height of a sinner. You do realize that. So if he was listed so as a sinner, you would be like, be a, you'd be like, you'd be like, you'd be like, okay, be a Joel Like okay, he's a sinner. He can't shoot. So you know what? No, he can still get better. He's only 24. Then shoot like Joel Embiid. How old is Joel Embiid? Uh, okay, let's. I feel a bet coming on of what his field goal percentage is going to be next year during the regular season. That's not. I do. I'm not making that bet unless we make it a three point slash two point percentage from outside the paint. Because you and I both know his field goal percentage will be fine next year. His free throw percentage, I make a bet on for sure. Uh, or, I don't know that hack. Sure. That hack of Ben Simmons would kind of make it a make it a weird bet. So I don't know. You know why it's a weird bet? Because the man because can't they do shoot it. free throws. Well, we'll see. He might be able to do it next year. Then believe in yourself. Look, I didn't. I didn't want to get on this Ben Simmons tangent. I'm not the biggest <laughs> you, Ben Simmons you have fan. Never, I, I, I let's have talk about. Let's go back to Trey. Let's go back to Trey Young. Young's defender. All right, back well, back to Trey Young. To be honest, just that question a, was what's your confidence in Giannis? So just FYI. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Joel. Fair question. Fair, fair point. Well, but we're on the Ben Simmons. I want to ask you guys which. I know, I'm about done ben with Simmons. Ben Simmons. Okay, <laughs> I know it. you're I'm done. Going the, I'm done I'm go- too. Minute, that's why I want to trade him. That's why I think they should trade him. Minute restriction. I'm going to the bench. Okay, Joel, what should Philly do with Ben Simmons? Yeah, Ben's. He's not playing another game in Philadelphia. There's no way. Wow. I mean, you got you that's got Doc River. Well, well, why are you laughing? That's it. <laughs> Doc, Doc Rivers threw him under the bus, obviously, in his post-game interview after Game 7. Joel Embiid did the same thing. I mean, you got the coach saying – the question was, hey, can Ben Simmons be a championship uh, point guard on a championship team? He's like, I don't know the answer to that. That's what his which head Which is a no, said. which is, is a head, friendly exactly. no. Exactly. <laughs> which is uh, clutch sports might want to be the agency that I deal with in the future, so I'm going to say a nice answer. And then keep in mind, also, he was the number one player mentioned in the trade talks with James Harden. The you know obviously until the trade went down uh, with Brooklyn. So you Damn. got you got you got you guys got to read in between the lines and pay to pick little things, man. And then uh, it, just obviously the media, Philadelphia. I mean, you've seen you seen a bullet. You, you've seen the players. You've seen the players after Game Seven leave Philly. They took their their the fans took their Ben Simmons jerseys off and literally were stomping them in the streets of Philly. Right after the game, I mean, they're just, booing this man when he's shooting done. free throws in his own they arena. They are done with him. Now to trade him is going to be a little bit challenging because obviously he still has a uh, hundred forty-six million dollars on that contract. <laughs> uh, so that's another story. Uh, I don't have a uh, destination for it. Maybe you guys do. I don't have a destination for him yet. All I'm saying is zero percent chance that this dude is going to be wearing a Sixers jersey next season. Come on, I mean, Joel. Come that's on, okay. Come on, I mean, here's the, here's the thing. Okay, if if you're gonna if you're the head coach and you say they ask him is he a championship point guard and he goes I don't know what GM is actually gonna offer you something that's worth it Joel if I'm the 76ers and you know what they're dumb you know 76ers have made a lot of dumb decisions um, so maybe they do trade Ben Simmons for nothing but that would be really ridiculous right now yeah no he's gonna be back in Philadelphia because no one's gonna wow. offer him a trade. No Luke, one's going to offer him a Luke trade that's Kennard worth it. Luke just hit a fadeaway three in the corner and got fouled by Dario Sarge. It's just an incredible shot here. It's the, the fourth score. quarter just started. Well, I, so I'm I'm with you, Walt. I'm, I mean, I'm with you. No one's going to trade anything good for him. But you know what some really sneakily good GM could do? What is that? Would you do Ben Simmons for Kimba Walker and a first from Philly? Would why you? would I'm curious? Why, I'm, I'm questioning. Why would Philly curious. do that? Why would Philly do that? Why that, would Philly? That makes them a worse team. They need a they guard need a that point can guard. shoot. They need a point guard who can shoot. <laughs> you want guard. injury? You want injury ridden Kimba Walker, who's 31? But okay, okay, okay. I hear you. That's not Wait. fair value back. I I I hear you. I it's a it's a proposal I have been throwing in my head the whole day. Okay, you're Philly. You've got Joel Embiid. 
you know this guy isn't going to play past 35. He's got too many injuries to list right now, right? You have a finite window of time. You have Kimball Walker locked in for a set amount of years going forward, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, Walker's been injured. Right. Not getting away from that. Not questioning it. But would you rather have a injury-prone Kemba Walker, who's only played in a bad system in Boston so far for the past year or two, I want to say, and bad system being that he's not any part of the focal point. They want Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to get the ball. So he's not, he's like the third dude. Would you rather have Kemba Walker as your traditional point guard with Joel Embiid, who I think would be a much, much better dude than any other guy we could think of, or would you rather have Ben Simmons for three years? Just for the just, yes. just, just preface it. Take take the whole take take the whole entire age thing out of it. Just say the next three years. Would you rather have Kemba or, or Ben? So I'm going to preface this with the the trade for to the Thunder. The Celtics literally had to give up the 16th pick and had to take back Al Horford's terrible contract. To get rid of Kimba Walker. Do you think the Celtics would have done that had they known that they would have had a chance to trade Kimba Walker for 24-year-old Ben Simmons? No. You're not going to do it. I don't think the Celtics would have would have done that trade no matter what for Ben Simmons for Kimba Walker. I don't think the Celtics would have taken Oh, I think ben, they would have done Simmons. it in a heartbeat. They had to give up their 16th pick to get terrible Al Horford back and still pay him $50 million. No, they would have done Al it in a heartbeat. Al Horford's previously played for Boston, and they like him as a guy. Uh, yeah, and he's he an old guy three. that's going to come off the bench probably. Uh, sure, but his contracts expire sooner. Uh, uh, we're having two separate conversations here, though, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. I, that's I, why I'm, I'm going to go into my answer you. was the Celtics could have just traded Kimba for Ben Simmons if that was going to be the deal. No, it's not a good deal. Ben Simmons is a lot better than Kimba Walker. I'm sorry. I'm I'm really excited to see Kimba rehabilitate and the Thunder turn him into another first round pick at the trade deadline. I'm very excited to see that. Don't get me wrong, but no, it's not. If I'm Philly, I would not do that trade. Okay. I would do. I would probably do Ben Simmons for maybe C.J. McCollum, or maybe a couple of picks from uh, the Pacers and uh, 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 Malcolm Brogdon. But I want to go. Maybe I want to go back to a point you said earlier that I think was an excellent point. That got me thinking about this trade and keeps me thinking about this Kimba Walker Ben Simmons trade, which is how hard is this guy going to be to trade? Everyone and their brother knows that Kimba Walker is is injury prone, and everyone and their brother knows that Philly wants to trade Ben Simmons. Yes, it's going to be hard to trade Kimba, and it's going to be hard to trade Ben. Yes, but that doesn't mean you trade them for each other. I'm just saying, I do not see the As a value. Thunder fan, would you be for this trade? Uh, No, I wouldn't be for this trade. No. So you don't want Ben Simmons back? That's it. You don't want Ben Simmons <laughs> in the first? Uh, I just uh, would be more interested into a, a developing uh, maybe a point guard and a shooting guard that can shoot. I enjoyed seeing Chris Paul, Dennis, and Shea because they all could shoot. Bro, why um, do we, why that? Do we like talk to for a that. solid five minutes on the podcast then about hey, Ben Simmons getting... giving him 10 years is too long to figure out how to shoot? If you're going to come <laughs> back and say him in a Thunder Uni, it's not good. Hey, well, I mean, I'm just saying he's, uh, he can. He flipped it. He flipped it on no, him. No, 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 no. I'm no, no, sorry no. I've been through this whole. But you know what? I'm not living at home anymore, so I can be as outlandish as I want to be and as loud as I want to be too with these takes. I got to admit, my roommate's probably going to come in and just be like, dude, chill out a little bit. Joel, Again, Joel, my whole, Joel, my whole point Joel, was that he could here. learn how to shoot. Joel, he Joel. could learn how to shoot. Doesn't mean okay. I trust that he will. That's fair. I would love to see the Ben Simmons rehabilitation project happen in Oklahoma City, where he plays for two seasons and is able to play his own unique brand of basketball with Shea Gilgis Alexander and plenty of other guys who can shoot. And Ben Simmons is basically known as a center for the rest of his life, which is fine. He can be a really good defensive center and play. A bunch of minutes every single game, but make 10 to 12 points a game. I don't think that's out of the question. And if he's on the Thunder roster to rehab his career, while well, the Thunder's still rebuilding, because let's sit, face it here, the sixth pick, Davion Mitchell, whoever it is, it's not going to change the franchise overnight. In one year, it's not going to. Fair? With injury-prone Kemba Walker, as you said. So, Joel, yeah, no, I'll uh, ask you. I'll ask you, Joel. Would you do this trade either way? If you're either team, would you do this trade I proposed? Is either team talking- winning in this trade situation of Kimba Walker for Ben Simmons? And let's say let's say it's straight up or the Thunder get back a first because because the Thunder's not going to give away a first to get rid of Kimba. They'll they'll just play out the season. We I think we know that. 
Right. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think it'll work out great for both of them. Again, I think with Philadelphia, you got to remember, they're the number one seed. They're the number one seed. And the only reason they lost, well, they lost for a couple of reasons. Ben Simmons, horrible free throw shooting. Ben Simmons, inability to shoot a perimeter shot. And then also, don't let it be missed, Danny Green's injury. Oh, okay. I knew What's you were going to bring up Danny You're Green's injury. You're talking about a big-time shooter. Oh, my God. Danny Green. What are, you, what are you doing in the finals winner. last year, Joel? What are you doing in the finals last year, Joel? He won an NBA championship. Champion. Got that right. Uh, he, he almost what lost What are you doing in the 2019 finals? He almost lost won it for an NBA Lakers. championship. He almost lost it for them, two. too. I don't it was know why terrible I'm terrible here. Finals. I'm not a Danny Green fan either. I don't know why I hyped on the anti Walter hey, bandwagon here for a second. Calvin, because you like jumping on both bandwagons. I like doing it too. It's fun. It's you fun. just it's switch exciting. from one side it's, to the other. It's exciting. It's, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's thrilling. Well, I know one team that Ben Simmons won't be going to. And that's the Lakers. He ain't going to go to the Lakers. We're good on him. We're good on I, him. Okay. I, I, don't I, know. I know he's with Clay. Are you, are you sure? He, you sure you yeah, guys yeah. have two huge contracts and definitely not a room for a third? Are you sure? Hey, Rich Paul ain't uh, dumb, man. Rich Paul is not dumb. He's gonna try to make he's trying to keep Ben Simmons happy, but he ain't gonna cross paths. We'll put him on a LeBron roster. I'm not, d- I, I see Ben Simmons I, to the Knicks. That's what he's gonna go. K- K- Calvin, I have some inside information about the Lakers that even Joel doesn't know about. Oh, let's uh, let's hear the, it. The, a oh, part God. of the banana boat crew is happening. Carmelo's signing with the Lakers, and then Chris Paul's going to sign with the Lakers this offseason. So that's uh, that's the Lakers offseason moves. I, I know that's always been thrown out there. Why, it, why and I, I think I think that that's that sounds like a dream scenario, right? I, I, I I'm not a, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed. To it. Obviously, we've seen Carmelo really revive his career out there in Portland. Uh, Chris Paul, you know, battling that shoulder injury, of course, in that uh, in the first series with the Lakers, and now obviously with the COVID situation. But uh, he's showing that he can still play at a very very high level. So. Um, yeah, uh, I think it'd be kind of cool now that LeBron's coming towards the end of his career, to, and they are—they've mentioned it before that they would—they would be down to playing, would be uh, on the same team with each other. So uh, yeah, I don't think that's too far fetched at all with your inside information. Well, I'm... nope. I hear Chris Paul's looking at schools in LA right now, <laughs> even though his kids no, his... already go there. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say his son's been going there. <laughs> his all wife right, never. All right. It, let's get moved. let's get down to brass tacks, Calvin. The Thunder are just getting ready to bring on Trey Young, and they're probably going to sign Blake Griffin to be their center this offseason. So. I would love Blake to go there because he's a comedian and he's funny. You guys know this. I'm ne- I, I respect Trey Young's confidence. I said this last night. I will reiterate it. Trey Young's confidence and ability to shoot the three-pointer from no man's land. Like, if I shot that, if I pulled up and shot that in the driveway and Walter or Joel are on my team, right? Both of you guys look at me and go, well, that's going to break the light bulb off the, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's just, but it, but it goes in every single time, right? Like he shoot, he pulls up shots that normally if you have other four people who are playing full court basketball on your team are going, damn, you know, like they're, they're pissed. They're, they're mouthing a couple of bad words. I'm not going to necessarily on the podcast. Because there's just such an unlikelihood that it'll go in. But he's got that confidence, and they're going in. He's got the little shimmy, you know, and it goes in. So I got to hey. give him the respect he deserves there. The Steph Curry, the potential to be better than Steph Curry, listen, um, I listen to, I've listen i listened to uh, the Ryan Rosillo podcast from The Ringer, and he had this segment called Take Stock, right? If you're offering this, this take at a very low stock, right, at like $20 a share, I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't touch it. I need it for like ten dollars oh a share. No, not even like because it's on a hundred dollar. It's on a hundred dollar cap. It's on a hundred dollar cap, right? I don't think there's a twenty percent chance this happens. I think there's a ten percent chance. I'm willing to not give you a completely one percent chance. But uh, man, that you guys have a lot of confidence in Trey Young. I one season in the this is his first it, time in the playoffs. His first season of the playoffs is just not. I just, I just hey, don't have that confidence. He's way hey, ahead. Go. You got to remember, Steph Curry didn't make it to the playoffs until his fifth season. Steph Curry didn't average 30 points until his seventh season. Trey Young is way ahead of the game, way ahead of what Steph Curry I'm, was putting up in those early years. Uh, I, Calvin, I, listen, you I'm do realize. You, but at the end got, of the day, he, we are in the ring culture where if you don't have a ring, it doesn't mean a thing. And if you're going to tell me that Steph Curry is going, you know what I mean, doesn't win another ring, but Trey Young wins three to match him from today on, I don't have enough faith in the Atlanta Hawks franchise to stay that healthy and that good for the next 
years that he's with them or whatever team he goes with, to be honest. This, hey, Calvin. this is a reclamation project on the Atlanta Hawks franchise, and this is a great situational thing. But you've you got to be telling me right now, if the Nets were playing the Hawks with a healthy Kyrie, not a, not a healthy James, just a healthy two out of the three of those guys, it would be a wrap. It'd be a wrap. That'd be it. And I don't well, trust – I just – real quick, well, I know you guys – I just don't trust Trey Young to have that type of fluky type of stuff happen all throughout the time that Steph Curry did get lucky with a couple of times. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, Calvin, I agree with you. I think if the Nets were healthy, I think it was a wrap. I think they were going to win the whole season. I mean, the whole championship. And it was probably going to be easy. But here's the thing. Trey Young just got the Mavericks GM fired for trading him for Luka Doncic. Also, we have to put in the fact that Steph Curry – he might have three rings, but in my book, he has zero. So we also have to put that into effect. <laughs> he has won two with Kevin Durant joining his team. And then he has one where he literally every team, including the Cavs in the finals, were missing key players. Well, then Trey Young will never have a ring in my eyes either. So I'll be making those same damn excuses. Oh. You'll be hearing him all oh, the yeah. time. Oh, yeah. So no Trey, Trey, Young's got, Trey Young's got Kevin Durant on his team. Hey, but Joel, you know, this is how I know Calvin is becoming a Trey Young fan because I think two months ago, he wouldn't have given Trey Young one compliment whatsoever. He did say, I've got respect for him pulling it from the logo. He did That's say that, Joel. Did, yep. Joel did, did he not say that? So is he becoming a fan? Yes or no? So uh, if, Doug, it's confidence, too. Yep. If we take, uh, what what was it, uh, Ryan Russillo, the guy that uh, went into the wrong house because he got so drunk, what was his taking stock? I'm taking stock in the fact that Calvin, by the end of next year, will be a Trey Young fan. Give me, <laughs> what was it, $100? Yeah, 100 <laughs> Walter, if you if you buy me a Trey Young shirt or jersey, I'll think about it. That's the only reason why. I, or I've if Joel will to... reveal publicly, to, at least just to me, does just have to send me a text forever what this thrift shop is where you guys get all this discounted stuff is. Oh, that's disclosed <laughs> information and, right there. Right, right. Whoa, and whoa, I'm whoa. just saying just to me. I'm not saying to the world, and I'm not clearly going to go back to it until August. But if, if, if but that's the only other way. Yeah, no, here's the thing. It's a discount to Joel, then he charges me 20%. Joel <laughs> makes a 20% adjusted gross margin when he does sell me those jerseys. But back to the Trey Young jersey, trying to find one. I'm trying to find an MLK jersey. Really difficult. I've even tried some of the China sources. Uh, still really difficult. Well, Joel, uh, so I've had Joel no you look. know my fandom. So if you find anything that's XL, I'll pay 20% as long as it's still half price of whatever it would have been originally. So that's true. Yep. But, you, find yep, a, no, you, just, you find a Justin Herbert jersey, I'll be there. Let me know. Derwin James. You'll find a Kenneth Murray jersey for you, Calvin. An OU one, a nice OU one. (laughs) Damn, well, why you gotta go that way, man? Why you gotta be? Just saying. I'm just saying. That's the best player on the Chargers, Kenneth Murray. You know it's not though. Come on, man. (laughs) The canine? Are you kidding me? Was he the offensive rookie of the year or the defensive rookie of the year? No, he wasn't. All right, moving on. I, I don't know. I don't even was know who the was the defensive rookie, rookie of the year. I'm pretty sure it was. It, well, if he wasn't, it was a screw job because he definitely deserved it. Was was he the rookie of the year? No. I'm sure he was. No. I'm sure he was. Come at me, bro. I'm what just saying. It? I'm just saying. When you talk to Chargers fans, they're most excited for Kenneth Murray. That's right, what they're most right, excited. All right. You know what, they say they want to see the canine. I, I got to ask Joel a couple more questions here, so we're going to wrap this one out here because he's wearing that, that's LeBron okay. James Cavs jersey. I'm, that I do love that Cavs jersey, by the way. It's got the little, yeah, you know, the little stripes that are yeah. along the side. Like it looks good. It looks good. Yeah, I'm past my minutes restriction anyway. So talk to Joel. All right. Thank gotcha, you. Yeah. Dodger chat. We got to work on, but you know that. So all right. Um, who's your pick to win it all, Joel? Clippers. Clip. Whoa. <laughs> I gotta stick with it, right? Oh, I can't I mean, back. Okay, I, okay. I, I, I can't. I can't reverse, man. Of what we talked about back in December. So, well, I said it's late. Your, uh, but if you it, had you, to give an updated one, has it changed at all, or is it still the clips? Uh, only because of Kawhi. Obviously, we we know that's gonna you know, damper the chances. Of course, uh, yeah. uh, I, I want to stick to my guns and keep my word of what I said December before even you know the first game of the NBA tipped off on Christmas. So, I do want to say the Clippers. Uh, but you guys got to give me just a little bit of credit. A little bit of credit about this Hawks team, okay? Well, I think we brought it up in a uh, on the December podcast, and then I reminded you guys, you know, uh, that, of my hot take of the Hawks would get to the second round. Uh, so obviously they're past that, making it to the conference finals. Um, so if the Clippers don't make it happen, man, I, I'm 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 all man, I'm all in on, on the on the Eastern Conference. I'm all in the Hawks, man. So if you want to say make an adjustment uh, on the Eastern Conference with all the injuries now and kind of catch up to date now that it's June 24th. And seeing it kind of everything's played out, 
um, I, I'm going all in it, for me to make that comment, obviously about Trey young and, uh, uh you know, potentially, uh, finishing a career better than Steph Curry, which is very, uh, uh news breaking. Um, I got to go all in on Eastern conference, uh, to have them represented, uh, with Co- coach McMillan and, and John Collins and Trey young and, and, uh, man, Gallinari, man, I, I, I'm digging how this team has really, really played and it really picked up their, their style play, um, since coach Nate took over. So, uh, let's go Clippers, Clippers and, 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 uh, Hawks with, uh, if Kawhi Barak has come back, but I'm not, I'm not hanging my hat on. I think he's done for the season. It's just, just his, his weird way of being quiet and not sharing the news. Uh, Kawhi plays Clippers win Kawhi doesn't play. You got Trey young bringing his championship to Atlanta. And year number three as a 22 year old. There it is. Oh, man. Whew. Oh, my I, gosh. Hey, well, well, how about that? Uh, I, I can't about wait that? to I can't wait to come over, watch a finals game with you with the OU jersey on. How about that? <laughs> a couple of red drinks. Let's make it happen, man. Let's go all in. I, I As much as I would just absolutely love for. I don't know something crazy to happen like that. I. It's the year for it. It's the year for it. It's an asterisk season. Remember, it's an asterisk season. Oh my gosh! Again, Joel. No, it's <laughs> it's not an asterisk season. All Trey Young has to do to pass Steph Curry is to win the ring this year because it'll be a real ring, unlike the three that Steph Curry does not have in my book. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't realize campaign got hurt in this game. So you know what? It's it's a you know what there might be an asterisk now that campaign got hurt. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> that's really hurt this game. Uh, the Suns would be up twenty right now if you wouldn't uh, hurt. Oh my god. Well, I guess my my Clippers to the finals look better now. Now that they're what, up eleven with five minutes ago. Yeah, it's looking like it. It looks like Jay Crowder's fighting with someone. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I've also got Holy Moly on. I'm trying to give the people what they want. Calvin, people ask for a Holy Moly recap once a week. Uh, hopefully I can start giving that as well. I, I, I will let you give it here in a second. I want to ask. Walter. Well, no, 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 not starting this week. We'll start it next week. Uh, okay. yeah, I've obviously okay. trying to catch up now. Uh, it was a bad time to do the podcast. Holy moly's on right now. Uh, it's still trying to, you know, ebbs and flows here. Uh, but hopefully next week we got a product that the, the listeners will really like. Well, Walter, who's your pick to win it all? Uh, I'm going with the Milwaukee Bucks. Oh Ooh. my God, dude. <laughs> See, the Hawks game? After the Hawks yeah, game? You, I, you saw that, right? You watched the yeah, Hawks game? Yeah, I saw it. I you watched just Trey Young for I, a solid like I, fifteen to thirty I, minutes. And I you understand saw it the box. They, they I, get swept, bro. I understand the bottom of Trey Young's feet shoes are green right now for how long he was in the paint oh, against the Bucks. Uh, yeah. Giannis is. I, you you have zero you? faith in Giannis. You have <laughs> you have faith in Giannis. You don't have faith in Giannis, but I do, man. Uh, him, Chris Middleton, and Drew Holiday, I think, is the best uh, best trio that's left. I think they'll find a way to you sneak past the Hawks and Trey Young cooked them for forty eight, right? I just want to make sure that you're I right. understand. I did watch it. I enjoyed every minute of it. I wish it would continue. Walter, uh, you, I don't you I talked, don't think it you will talked but mad uh, smack on me for a solid minutes of this podcast. Yeah, this don't make I no did, sense. I don't believe in Trey Young. No sense. I did you're gonna not um, believe in Trey Young. This makes no sense. Yeah, Trey Young can score Trae Young. Trey Young can score fifty and they can still lose. So uh yeah, Trey Young will keep cooking. Don't worry. Uh but uh, I'm going. You're not believe on him to win the games. You're not gonna believe on him because we know winning uh, is everything. Dude, it was. I was. I'm extremely impressed with how far he's made it so far, and I hope it continues. I will be cheering for Trey Young mainly because I know he's coming to the Thunder in a couple years. So yes, I will be cheering for Trey Young. I just, uh, ah, Giannis is so good. Uh, Joel, Giannis is good. It's a good player. Yeah. No, he can't score, man. He can't score. Yeah, it's terrible. He's a good play. He's a good player. Chris Middleton's good. Drew Holiday's a pretty good player. I know he got his ankles broken. We'll have to check. If Drew Holiday got his ankles actually broken from Trey Young, then maybe I go Hawks. All right. All right. Well, la- last question here for the night, or at least for this podcast, is following this season, which team do you like more next season? Guards that all that the team stays together. So Chris Paul resigns, you know, all type of stuff, whatever. Who do you like more, the Suns or the Hawks? Following this season, Joel, you take it away here since Walt just spoke. Uh, yeah, uh, Hawk, Hawks hands Hawks. down, man. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, I love the build of the team. Uh, they got because remember you, <laughs> you got to have superstar power, of course, which Trey Young is definitely a superstar. But you all got to have you also got to surround those superstars with an a- athletic body and shooters. 
Okay. Uh, you got John Collins, who, again, huge on John Collins. Um, definitely have that athletic ability. You've seen him jump out the gym multiple times yes, yesterday, including, as uh, Walter mentioned, the, the nice little kiss off the backboard from Trey, uh, throwing it down. Uh, so you got the athleticism out there. And then you got some big-time shooters. Uh, you've seen Kevin, Kevin Herter won a game by himself in the Philadelphia series. So he solidified he himself. Won, yeah. He won the game almost against the Nets the other night. Oh, excuse yep. me, not the Nets, but yeah, he won. He won the game against the Sixers. Excuse me, that was that. You, you had that right. Yep. And then you got uh, Bogdanovich, of course. I know he's kind of slipping just a little bit here in the last couple games, but he'll he'll pick it back up. Um, and then of course, you know, you got Danilo Gallinari, and then you got man, you got the ultimate role players. You got to have guys no no other responsibilities. If you're not going to score, what else you going to do? And then you got Clint Capella out there, man. And you've seen the success that uh, James Harden had alongside with him at that at that five spot. Uh, I want to say they I heard a stat. He, he had 30 games this year with 15 or more rebounds. Uh, so you got a guy just doing all the dirty work, man. So, uh, I love the builder team and then, but the biggest piece obviously is that, that coaching switch, uh, uh, uh coach Nate, man, I hope they take care of him this off season, get him paid. Uh, cause they man, got this, to. they this, got to, that's the touch. Seriously. Yeah. This is a, to. this is a team, man. This is a team. And just listen to the interviews. I know a lot, a lot of these guys are younger. Um, so of course the, 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 you know, deck is stacked against them, of course, but man, I think Nate is, uh, solidified himself as, uh, even though he didn't coach the, the the full season, but uh, definitely will be up there with you know pushing for uh, a major run again next year, man. And uh, so yeah, uh, uh, although it, it's a tough question because you know Phoenix is also built built um, very very uh, similarly, you know with the, with star power. Of course, with Devin Booker, you got shooters out there. You got athleticism out there. You got a good big man inside with DeAndre Ayton. Um, Suns will also be really good next year. Really dang good next year too. But uh, if I got to pick between the two, man, I'm just I'm going hardcore all in on that train, uh, that Trey Young Trey. Yeah, train. All right. Well, Walter, before I'll, I'll talk to you last year, I just got to say, so I made this outline after watching the Valley Oop in Phoenix. You get that? The Valley Oop. It sounds great with that branding and putting those jerseys out immediately. But I, wa- I made this outline after that, and immediately I went, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm taking the Suns for most of these questions, right? Like, can the Clippers come back? I was going, nope, it's got to be the Suns. Then who's your pick to win it all? It's like, going to be the Suns. Then following the season, which do you like more? It's going to be the Suns. Now, I, I got to say, watching the Clippers beat them like this, just at home, where it looks like they're not even missing a beat, even though Chris Paul's back. I understand campaign got injured, but even though Chris Paul's back, they still don't have Kawhi. And they're they're up 104-88 to 88 with a couple minutes left. And honestly, I don't know what all the stats are here. I'm just watching the game as we're doing the podcast a little bit, like here and there. Reggie but got 23. Who has? Reggie. Jackson. Reggie. But, is, but does Paul George have like 40? I mean, is anything crazy? 27. No, 27. Yeah, that's, that's not, you know, does Booker have, like, you know, five? No. Yeah, I mean, 15. the face mask doesn't help, but, like, I guess 15 isn't great. Yeah, but still my point's going to be regardless here. It's not just a confident, like, oh, I'm taking the Suns for everything I put on this outline. And I have to say here, it's mur- the water should become very murky here as far as which do I like more for next year. I'm still going the Suns because I'm saying under this idea that they have Chris Paul. So if the Suns don't have Chris Paul, I'm taking the Hawks. I hate to say it, but I got to. If the Suns have Chris Paul next year, I'm still taking the Suns. Still rocking with them. I think they can be even better next year. Another year playing with Chris Paul together. Hopefully everyone stays healthy, knock on wood. But at the same point, man, the Clippers look good right now against the Suns. So it kind of pains me to say I got confidence in the Suns still. But they are up two games either way right now as Lisa stands, and they could be up 2-1 or they could be up 3-0. We'll see. It looks like it's going to be 2-1. But, well, what about you? Suns or Hawks after this? Yeah, I'm going to go with Hawks. Uh, even with the Suns bringing back Chris Paul, Chris Paul's getting older. Uh, you know, the Hawks are missing DeAndre Hunter right now, too, with the injury and missing Cam and Reddish. Reddish, yep. Yeah, I know, Reddish isn't, I know Reddish isn't that big of a deal in the lineup. He's not officially a bust yet. But Hunter is a big-time player. Um, at least he has been. He's been, I think, around 14 points a game before he got hurt. Uh, of course, drafted from in 2019, so he's really young. And then just not not to mention, Trey Young's just going to get better. He's just going to get better. And if and the big question is, will they bring back John Collins? It seemed like at the trade deadline, you know, when they right as they were firing the coach, it seemed like they might be trading John Collins. Um, I think it's safe to say they're going to try to re-sign him. I don't know if they will though. Uh, maybe if there's a cap issue or something going on there. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to go with Hawks. Danilo Gallinari, 
Clint Capella, DeAndre Hunter. Then you got Bogdanovich. You got Kevin Herter, Trey Young. I'm, I just think that'd be uh, better than the Suns. Fair Getting enough, better. Yeah, no, no. Hey, hey I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. Um, honestly, pretty much no disagreements there, man. Um, yeah, uh, Cl- Clippers up sixteen with a minute thirty third, with a minute thirty three, and I still think Paul George, who's on the bench, I still think he's going to find a way to choke the game away. We'll does. see. That'd be an all time classic. But um, who else we got? Uh, real, oh, real quick here, who's the worst player on the roster for the Olympics that came out the other day? Kevin Love. Yeah. Jeremy Grant. Oh no 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 no. Oh no 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 no. Kevin Love. No, oh. it's not. No, 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 no. It's uh, it's Drew Holiday. He's a good player, but no, he's not. Dude, Kevin Love, Love in the Shower. Are you kidding me? Jeremy Grant. Oh, those are big time players, Joel. No, uh, Drew Holiday. You're... Oh, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. No, sorry, no, it's no. no. It's not Drew Holiday. No, I'm it sorry. It's it's no, 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 no. It's no. Yeah, no. Yep. Thank you. It's Damian Lillard. Lame time. He couldn't even beat Austin Rivers. Austin yeah, Rivers. Yeah, Joel took me to start. You know, no. Austin, muted for a minute so you could hear no, my lovely Austin voice Rivers, here. But Austin yeah, Rivers, while we say that Austin here, Rivers, actually, that gives me another opportunity Austin to Rivers, go ahead and plug the I'm podcast. I'm going to go Austin so Rivers. Please follow at the CJ hey, Tour on Twitter and Instagram. Austin Rivers. More. If you haven't Joel, been watching you the podcast me? via video, nope. you're missing nope. out. Yeah, you can nope. see me throw my hands in the nope. air several times, see what kind of beer I'm drinking as well. Um I Austin got Rivers Gatorade queued up here. Austin Rivers as well too. Walter's like Austin throwing his hands Rivers. up in the air, whatever, because he's muted. It's just wonderful Austin time. Austin Rivers. I can't hear Austin him either. Rivers. So he's got like a Austin pillow Rivers. and a bag. I'll, I'll unmute him here for a second or two, but only as I play the outro music, just because. Yeah, uh, yeah. I want to be here unmuted. Stock here for a minute, for an hour and six yeah. minutes now. Thank you so much for listening yeah. to this episode of the CGA Tour. Please follow the CGA Tour on Twitter and Instagram for more. Walter. Yeah, you're gonna make Go me lose what my voice again. What you got, Walt? dude? What Austin, you got? Austin Rivers. Austin Rivers should be on Team USA. Lillard should be off with the way Austin Rivers manhandled Lillard in the playoffs. Thank you and good night. Holy moly's back, baby. Joe, hey, that's fine. Damian Lillard can rest because he's gonna join the Lakers next season, so I'm cool with it. Ah, uh, no, he's not. <laughs> Oh, that's going to be scary. And well, you're both yeah. muted because those were the craziest two takes we're going to hear of the entire podcast. In Holy fact, moly. Walter's Holy take of moly. Damian Lillard shouldn't start. I got to give that. I, I like Damian Lillard more than Trey Young. And that's a lot for me to say. So that's a lot. It takes a lot out of me. So thank you as always for listening to the latest episode of the CJ Tour podcast. Please follow at Coach Nicolo on Twitter. Got to follow Joel. Follow at Walter8350 on Twitter as well, too, even though he doesn't use the platform anymore whatsoever. And follow me on Twitter, at the CGA Tour, because my personal Twitter is not really useful whatsoever. And thanks so much for listening here. Give us a review rating on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to the podcast. And we'll catch you guys again soon. Peace. Walter, you need to grow up against Snapchat, man. Man, Reggie Jackson's such a bitch. You gotta grow up, man. I don't care. I hate Reggie Jackson. He sucks. I hope Chris Paul destroys him game four.